Hi, I'm with uh, Professor Clive Spash, uh, who's at the Vienna University of Economics and Business, where he's Professor of Public Policy and Governance. Uh, now, Clive's going to talk to us about what's going on in the teaching of economics, why that's controversial, and what some students are saying about what they're being taught. Um, so what is going on, uh, Clive? Talk about that. Well, since the financial crisis and the, the crash that resulted from that, the students have been very upset about the failure of economics to actually address the crisis, to be able to explain it, to actually say anything that's relevant about it. As a result of which, they've been complaining to the, uh, the professors and to the, uh, the management of the curriculum in the universities, and they've been trying to get a change, to get something that is more meaningful, more realistic, to expand the curriculum, to include a whole range of alternative economics, which used to be taught, which is taught when I was an undergraduate in economics, and which is no longer taught, which is being pushed out of economics. So they're not being taught about alternative theories like neo-Marxist theories or post-Keynesian theories or history of thought or philosophy of sciences. They're not getting any of this. So they've got a very, very narrow position now in the economic curriculum. And it's basically a failure. We're training economists who don't understand the real economy. And um, so if I'm a student, a current student, or uh, next year, uh, or starting in the autumn of 2015, or, or shortly, I want to be an economics student, um, what would you advise me to do? The students have got to take direct action. They've got to make sure that the faculties, the economics departments, really understand that they are failing them. They are failing them in their education. They're teaching them mathematical formalistic models that have no bearing on the economy. So the students have got to do things like sign petitions, walk out of the classroom, and really make sure that the faculty listen to them. They've got to get organized, which they are doing. So there are things like the post-crash students in Manchester. There's an international movement to try and get solidarity among students to actually get curriculum changes. But this has been going on for some years now, and it's actually been failing. The, the faculties are not listening. They're able to make small adjustments, to bring in minor changes to the core. There's even a, a program called CORE, which has been set up as a, what I would say is a, a bit of a cynical approach, actually, whereby the, the main uh, neoclassical economics uh, is not changed at all. And then superficial things are brought in. And the students are not happy with this. They want something else. And they have to be persistent. And they have to actually take, they have to escalate the kind of action they take. The other thing you can do as a student is to actually demand that there are more interdisciplinary programs, that you're able to actually get the education you want from other departments if the economics departments won't deliver. And um, just to put it into sort of plain language, um, you talk about neoclassical economics and things like that, but in terms of people in the street and their understanding, um, we ha have a, an economic uh, model of growth and that this, is w this will lead us all to greater prosperity and, and peace and love and happiness as the sort of standard way we're taught. Um, what needs to change in that? So the, w the whole way that the economics is being set up, that the, the market system is a perfect operating system that has some minor things that need to be adjusted, the way that neoliberalism has arisen so that we're now to believe that the corporations can provide everything for us, that materialism is the answer to our lives, that we just need more stuff, that the jobs are actually meaningful. All of these things are embedded in the economics. There's no questioning. What is a meaningful job? Is working in a factory nine to five, is that, is that really meaningful for your life? Is just having more and more stuff meaningful? Is the whole consumer society meaningful? These are the things that are questioned and opened up by alternative economic thinking, which are closed down by the mainstream, which is when I say neoclassical thinking. So it, it actually, shuts down the space for questioning and for thinking about these it sorts of issues, which are essential to the way that our economies are going. So we're continually being told all we need is more growth. We need more stuff. We, and that this is the key indicators for the political system, is the growth, the GNP growth. Economies are, and politicians are judged on whether they're growing the economy. Growing what? I mean, the idea that we should have switched to happiness even is even more ridiculous. How much happiness can you have? You know, we've got to have more and more happy. We've got to get happier and happier all the time. And this is ludicrous stuff. What about a meaningful life? What about a good life? These are the things that we have to actually change the economics that we have to actually address the fundamental things about what it is to be a human being. Okay, so um, we're looking at trying to change the way of teaching these things, um, and that's a big job. Uh, in the meantime, uh, if 
things aren't changing, I'm wondering about whether to go to do an undergraduate degree or not. Um, should I do it? Should I not bother? Should I just read stuff? What, what would I do? It's very difficult to get a proper education in economics now. The places where economics is being taught in a more open fashion is actually more likely to be in a business school, in political science, in human geography, outside of mainstream economics departments, because the mainstream economics departments have become so controlled. They have actually pushed people out, like myself. You know, I am not in an economics department. I'm actually in a socio-economics department. And before that, I was in a geography department for a while. The, so people who are, t who are prepared to teach alternative economic thinking are actually not in economics departments. So if you want to really learn about economics, maybe don't go to an economics department, go somewhere else. You know? This is one of the messages. The other thing is, what, you know, if the, economists, the mainstream economists really believe in supply and demand, the students should test them on that, and they should stop demanding their courses. They should just stop going to them. What would happen to a university if the first, second, and third year students all together so showed solidarity and stopped going to classes, stopped taking exams, and just ignored the total curriculum until they got what they wanted? Presumably, the economics department would have to respond. Well, it's a great question. It's a question that possibly we should even just put to our audience. Um, so there's a lot in there. That's Professor Spash. Um, you can look this stuff up um, if you do the hashtag post crash economics. If you look at Twitter handles like at post crash econ, you can find out more information. Um, you've got a sense of it here from Professor Spash. And this is Patrick Chalmers speaking for Telemonbrun on assignment in Austria. Thank you very much.